talking about the things that matter most to you. Catholic Women Now. Welcome to Catholic Women Now this morning. I'm Julie Nelson, and I'm joined today by Emily Schmidt. Hi, Emily. Hi, Julie. It's great to see you again. Always great to see you. We are got a we have a, a really exciting topic for Emily and I. It's been part of our journey, and we're we want to share it with all of you. And it's understanding who we are as spiritually adopted daughters of God, the Father, and it has to do with our identity. It has to do with what we think, but how how to embrace it how to know we're living it out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share a little bit about our own personal journey in that to help you with yours as well. And we're, it, it, there's just so much richness in this. Yes. I'm excited to talk about this topic. It's one that Julie and I talk about a lot. And so we knew it was only natural to do a show about this. And I think it's a really important message for people, especially women to hear, because there are so many other voices that give us our identity in this culture and if we can root our identity in God and understand what that looks like, we have a healthier and happier and holier life. You know, it's the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. really comes back down there. You, when we embrace our identity as a, as a spiritually adopted daughter of, of God the Father, everything flows from that. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from that. It's mm -hmm. just like the wellspring yeah. for who we are and be in, in the world, whether we're working in a professional life or we're working in ministry or whether we're a wife, mother, yeah. what, what, a spiritual sister, spiritual, you know, aunts, everything. And even so, like our mental well, well-being comes from that and yes. how we take care of ourselves physically and mentally and emotionally all comes from that identity as it, well. It really yeah. does. And as you, as, we, <laughs> as I've walked in that, I began to understand that deeper. You know, that the taking care of myself kind of came later because, you know, I think it's easy for women to just put others first mm -hmm. at, at, at a cost sometimes. And especially, you know, with my family and things like that. Then that came a little later. But once it did, it was just so beautiful and opened up so much for me. Yeah. Inside, you know, I bloomed. Another, <laughs> I had another blooming. <laughs> oh, yes, that's very beautiful. Well, let's entrust the show today to the Blessed Mother. All right, Mary, we just entrust this to your Immaculate Heart and ask that you pray for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Iowa Catholic Radio is welcoming Scotty Mercury with special guest Allie Colleen to the Iowa Events Center Ballroom Sunday, July 24th. Tickets and information available at celebratecountry.org. So grab your cowboy hat and your cowboy boots, Emily. <laughs> Let's go. You can also listen to positive music, sacred music, through the Iowa Catholic Radio app at iowacatholicradio.com and the Iowa Catholic Radio Alexa skill. That's right. You can tell Alexa to play Iowa Catholic Radio. It's pretty cool. My mom does that all the time. <laughs> Listen to us. Anyway, uh, yeah, and, and I have to have to put a little plug for Jimmy Olson, who mm -hmm. does our board operator. He does, he puts all that music together, and he I don't know if people know he DJs over at one hundred seven point one, which is a mu Christian music yeah. station. So the I like the modern Christian music. I mm -hmm. listen to that most of the time. I do like sacred in the right in the right moment, but it's just nice to know it's it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's current. We have a great wealth of tradition of music in the church from all the traditional to all of the contemporary. And it's really beautiful because we all um, have different preferences. So it give, God gives us that. <laughs> and it's all praise and worship. Yes, it from is. From chant to mm -hmm. modern Christian music, mm -hmm. right? It is all. Yeah. And, Mary, and in case anybody doesn't know, Emily Schmidt is a musician. And what do, what's the your The director of liturgy and music at St. Francis so, of Assisi. So yeah. this is this is her talking point right here. And maybe we do a <laughs> this show is my on identity. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we do a show on this sometime, Emily. Yeah. Well, let's get into identity. Speaking of identity, and I think a... I want to say our Catholic identity and really yeah. make this specific to our Catholic identity. But what is identity? You know, well, like we said earlier, all fruitful kingdom ministry flows out of our identity. Well, we are the daughters, spiritually adopted daughters of God, the father, and he's the king of the universe, right? He's mm -hmm. made everything. He's the creator. And I have access to everything I need to do to what he's called me to do. And I can minister out of this truth and understanding our identity, our spiritual adoption. That happens. Mm -hmm. We have access to everything. Yeah. And it's what makes us seen and known and loved. And through that access, 
we are given the tools that we need to live out our vocation on earth as we journey to heaven. Right. I just, I'm just kind of stuck on everything. The word everything. <laughs> it's like, it's not just this, 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 but it's everything. everything. And you know, it's like, <laughs> ask for it, ask for it. Cause he decides to give it to us. And I think about the, our father, we say that every Sunday yeah. at mass, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done um, on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Heaven comes to earth. And that's this is what we're calling upon. Mm-hmm. But if, for those of who want to know about this in Scripture, you can find it in Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 17, where um, Paul talks about we become spiritual adopted children of God through the Holy Spirit, mm. the baptism. And through our baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit reveals who Christ is, reveals who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And he gives us the Holy Spirit is what stirs within us the the promptings of God that we to be known, to be seen, to be loved, so that and to stir those gifts within us that God gives us. And that's what sometimes we fail to ask for more of. But I guess we don't really need to ask for it because the Holy Spirit's there asking on our behalf because that's what our dad gives us. That's right. And Paul t- <laughs> reminds us we don't have to have the spirit of fear. Yeah. I mean if you're afraid that's of this, so if there's something that's holding you back we don't need to have that spirit of fear. You know, that's of the flesh. That's of the flesh. We have, we have the Holy Spirit, right? We do. And he is what just, Julie, help me out. What does the Holy Spirit give us? <laughs> you know, this is Romans 5, 5. It's my yeah. life verse. The Holy, the power, the um, love of God is poured into our hearts mm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So that love of God that we have carrying our hearts, you want a deeper love for God, you want a deeper relationship with Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit yeah. to unlock that, to bring that forth. The Holy Spirit does a lot for us. I was talking to um, someone yesterday and they reminded me that the Holy Spirit is the advocate, which is another name for lawyer. And so I was thinking about that in in lieu of, ide- or in conjunction with identity. And I was like, well, if I'm the daughter of the king, my dad has a kingdom, but he also gives me his lawyer. So when (laughs) my daddy gives me his lawyer, so when I'm battling lies, when I'm battling temptation to not believe who I, God says I am, like, I don't have to do anything. I just send dad's lawyer, the Holy spirit into battle with, and and the military too. The whole military is on my side. So I had, like you say, everything is mine. Everything of the fathers is mine. And that includes in times of trials and temptations. That's right. Oh, I love that. The advocate. Right. Right. And you know, he's advocating for us because we have been given an inheritance. Mm -hmm. What's that inheritance? Heaven, in heaven, because God <laughs> desires us to be in heaven with them. And he wants to do everything for with us to make that happen. But how? Well, that's the big, you know, million dollar question, yes. right? How do we get that? Well, it's kind of like this. You can know it and um, but you need to receive it in your heart. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if I tell you this delicious meal, mm-hmm. but you will not understand it until you partake in it. Right. Right. So uh, we're going to go into that a little more. We're going to share our personal stories Absolutely. about that. Like, I think that will be helpful. This is, I'm Julie Nelson, and I'm joined with Emily Schmidt, and this is Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. Most of us can recall a childhood memory of innocence and a peace that only comes from God. Yet with our busy schedules today, many families don't attend church weekly or spend much time teaching their children about God. So many families now are burdened by financial and family challenges, substance abuse, and other worries. But there is hope. Studies show that people who pray regularly and practice their Christian faith are less stressed, financially stable, more compassionate, optimistic, healthier, and happier. Experience a positive difference in your life and for your family by coming home to your parish. Learn more by visiting catholicscomehome.org today. Here you may find answers to your questions and discover how Jesus and the sacraments will bless your family. There's no pressure or risk. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. 
With support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. It can be easy to forget about the dignity of another when we disagree with their ideas or actions. We start to focus on the things that make us different, and the thoughts start to divide us. Before we reach the conclusion of those thoughts, we must pause and remind ourselves that person with a different idea or lifestyle has great dignity. The next time you find yourself ready to go toe-to-toe with someone, remember that they have dignity and deserve respect, even when we disagree. today with Emily by with Emily Schmidt and we're talking about be, living out this spiritual adoption of being daughters of the Father God and it comes through understanding who we are in God mm-hmm. right and in our place in the kingdom so one thing that I think would be helpful for our listeners mm-hmm. hopefully is to hear our own personal journeys with this because it's one thing to talk about it in your head but it's how to receive it in your heart so we're hoping mm-hmm. that by sharing our journeys that will help you open that up for you as well absolutely because even though like everything that the God ha- that the Father has is ours. We have to accept receive. that and receive it. So, yeah, Julie asked me a great question. When did I receive this? When did I accept it? And I had to think about it. And I have a, a really poignant story in my life where I was just talking with a friend, and I think I was sharing insecurities with them and kind of down on myself. And that friend said, "Have you ever read Isaiah forty three?" And um, so I we turn to it in our Bibles and this is a good friend when you have a friend who knows scripture. Um, we all need those. friends. Yes, we do. (laughs) And in Isaiah 43, if you start just at verse one, it says, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you and through rivers. They shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. And skipping down to verse four, it says, because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. And that just opened up the beauty of God and and really the truth that in God's eyes, I am loved and seen and known and I am his daughter. And you can even take that first verse and change your name for that. So where it says, Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Emily, he who formed you, Miss Schmid, because Israel's like the last name. And so we can even insert ourselves into that. And this has just been a life verse for me that I come back to time and again when I forget who I really am. So what I heard, heard from this part of this, Emily, is that you are by just being. You yes. didn't have to work for no. it. You didn't have to do <laughs> so, so many true. novenas or go to so many <laughs> ministry meetings and do all yeah. this. Just be. That's the inheritance, right? That's Mm -hmm. what an inheritance is. Mm -hmm. You receive a family inheritance when someone passes away because you're part of the family, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like we said, you just have to receive it, accept it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's as easy as just saying, opening your hands in prayer and saying, Lord, I accept it. And I think reading this verse, this is where I daily accept God's inheritance for me. Well, for me, it was lies. I was Mm. believing the lies of the world and I was listening to the wrong voice. And one of the lies that was really big was that performance mentality, which we kind of alluded to just now is I had to earn, I had to earn my salvation. I had to do this and do that and be on this committee and go to church and, and, and it became so formula, but it was just out of a fear. And once I realized, once these lies started, I realized what lies were and started casting them out. I began to see Mm -hmm. that he loved me just, he created me in his image and likeness. And that was, I could be in that. I could be that. He wanted this for me and he was going to, Jesus is going to help me with it. And God, the father is there in every step of the way. And I didn't have the best relationship with my earthly father. Yeah. So having uh, God, the father helped me also to heal some of those things too. That's good that you mentioned that because there Mm -hmm. are so many people with, um, 
relate broken relationships with their earthly parents. And when those earthly parents are supposed to be our, um, window into God's love for us, it can really distort our view of the father. And I would say like, I had a really good dad. I even had a really great grandpa as well. So I had two really strong male figures who reflected the God, the, the love of the father. However, they're still humans. They're right. still imperfect. And so we all have to, some of us have more to do than others, but we all have to filter through where's the father, what is the father's love being reflected through our earthly parents and what is just their humanity that we need to not give to God. I was just thinking as you were saying that too, a thought came to my mind is that if you're struggling with something like this, I just want to give this to our listeners. If you're struggling with something like this, like from childhood or some other time in your life, just take it to prayer and ask Mm. God, where were you in all this? It's a great prayer because he's there. But sometimes in all the muck, we don't Mm -hmm. see it or we were too young to understand that about our faith. But ask him, where was he in that? But and actually really visualize reflection. where he was. Maybe he was in the room there. Yeah. You know, where in the room were you? You know, and that it is, it is because he show he'll reveal himself to you as his, as God. Oh the my Father. gosh. But how do we do this? You know, yeah. this is the big question. Yeah. We got to get to this, but a lot of it is Romans 12 too. um, renewal of the mind, changing our mindset from the, from the earthly perspective, how the world sees things to how God sees it. It's a kingly kingdom mindset and mm-hmm. it takes time. And I have to, and I, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to break the bubble here. It's lifelong. I'm yes, still <laughs> learning new things. Like self care was like a recent one. I could accept that, yeah. but we still learn that. And, and it's lifelong. And, um, it, it is about renewing your mind, seeing things as Jesus sees things or God, the father, like I just talked about with memories. Um, that's what renewal of the mind is. And it's, um, it's also listening to God's voice and knowing who God is and knowing the attributes of God as well. Like, I, I mean, I, when I give um, spiritual direction, someone will come to me and they, they start saying these negative things. I, I'll just say, whose voice are you listening to? That's, yeah. Does that sound like a loving father? Right. That's such a good uh, exercise of like, does this, would God say this? Right. Like, and if you're like, no, he wouldn't, but that's where the Holy spirit as our lawyer, I'm going to come back to that because it's really helpful because he he advocates, he advocates for us. So like, even if we fall into the lie, even if logically we know that that's a lie, sometimes our heart hasn't caught up with that. That's where the Holy spirit can remind us of our identity and say, no, you are a child of God. You are loved by God. You are precious and honored in his eyes. And the other thing is to increase our faith. Oh, yeah. And how do we increase our faith? Well, there's that could be 10 million shows on that. But the one <laughs> thing I want to say is here through hearing, we increase faith by hearing. That's in scripture. Don't ask me where I can look it up later. <laughs> and how, what do it is the hearing the word of God. So it's scripture, it's prayer, it's spending time with God, reading mm-hmm. more of scripture than the headlines. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's what is a lot of it. So yeah, praying more than you're scrolling on social media. Exactly. Which let me own that one. I <laughs> probably need to work on that. <laughs> oh, true confession. Me too. So, <laughs> Well, this is Julie Nelson. I'm visiting with Emily Schmidt. We're talking about Catholic identity, how we live in the spiritual adoption as daughters of God. You're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. Hello, Steve Ray here. Join me along with Iowa Catholic Radio's Matt Wilcom and Father P.J. McManus for our Footprints of God Holy Land pilgrimage, November 11th through the 20th, 2023. We'll see the Church of the Visitation, touch the top of Calvary, and visit the famous Western Wall. Plus, I'll be right there with you the whole time to bring the Bible to life at every site. Don't miss the Iowa Catholic Radio's 15th anniversary Holy Land pilgrimage. Early bird pricing is available. Details at iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies, serving the Catholic families in Iowa. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families, specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. And you can reach Knights of Columbus field agent Rob Ryan at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. St. Vincent de Paul helps so many people. You're right, Zoe. St. Vincent de Paul Executive Director Steve Havman here. We are serving over 32,000 local residents with food, clothing, furniture, and financial assistance annually. We invite you to learn more about all of our life-changing programs that positively impact so many Iowans by simply Googling St. Vincent de Paul of Des Moines. Our mission is to help those in need become self-sufficient through education, community connectedness, and unconditional support. Help us help others. Even kids! Julie Nelson joined by Emily Schmidt this morning talking about spiritual adoption and living as a daughter of the father. So right before the break, we talked a little bit about our own stories and about the renewal of the mind. So Julie, as we've been talking about this, like one question that always comes to my mind is how do I know that I'm living in this identity? How do I know that I have had a renewal of mine? What does that look like in a person who's been transformed in that oh, way? Oh, I agree. I, I, I agree. I, I, and I have seven ways here that can help us to mm. look at ourselves and, and um, do like that self-examination. Yeah. So the first thing is to live in hope. Mm. And any thought not rooted in hope is a lie. And that kind of goes back to what I talked about in my own life. It's like, you know, is that God talking to me or is that whose voice is talking to me. If I'm finding yeah. that hope in something, then I'm a, there's a lie there mm-hmm. to uncover. Because so we, we live as hope as Christians. Like yes. Jesus is risen. Jesus has defeated evil. And that's how we should always live our so lives. So you would see this mm-hmm. in your life, like something comes along that trips you up or something, and you find yourself like not getting so caught up in it. Yeah. Like, oh, that's true. I'm starting to live with hope. I'm seeing this through mm-hmm. the eyes of Jesus. I know I have Jesus. The second thing is, the impossible seems reasonable. With Ooh. Un- yeah. With God. Well, what's that mean, Julie? It's like, <laughs> this is a big one. It's like healing of, of cancer. For example, if people are praying with a transformed mind, they will likely see healing or be healed. Wow. That's a big one. It is a big one. And, and but I, not, un- but not impossible. Yes. But we could also see it in like little things like, yeah. you know, I just don't think that person likes me or that person right. will ever like me. But it's possible with God. Right. right. Mm-hmm. 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 Or the situation can be resolved. It's possible yes. with God. Yeah. And you're living in hope and you're mm-hmm. living in the impossible. You live with peace and you don't worry. Ugh. I mean, I think that's that's a that's a big one there too. A but greater but, surrender. But it's the small little steps, right? Yeah. You know, a situation that's always giving you anxiety, maybe it's not bothering you so much. Yeah. You're starting to live in that renewed mind. You're starting to live as a spiritual daughter of God. You like yourself. Oh, I like that one. We talked about that (laughs) when we were talking about self-care, but you rejoice in your weakness and know he is strong. Mm -hmm. You are not just your strength. When I am weak, I am strong because God has designed me and he actually uses me when I am flawed. And all strength that we, in scripture, anytime they prayed for strength, it was always asking God to give them his strength. You know, I, I experienced this. I recently, when... I did something just really silly and instead of brooding over it and being like, Oh, Emily and like degrading myself, I laughed at myself and was like, Oh, that's just, I do that sometimes and I'll do better next time. (laughs) That's a good example. That's a great example. Um, you're quick to forgive and give mercy to others. And if people are hanging on to bitterness and unforgiveness will tether you to your past and it could lead to mental illness. You talked about mental health earlier and forgiveness is the first step toward restoration. So we have to walk in that healing and that belief. And, uh, when you start to forgive people more easily, um, that's another sign. I am confident and thankful. I can't be Mm. arrogant and thankful at the same time. I think that's where praise and worship helps a lot. Yeah. You know, you know, it helps you live in that attitude of gratitude that people talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just changes things. And, and, and in scriptures, you know, they weren't, they were living under such Roman persecution, but you always heard the good that was happening. Yeah. From Paul. Oh yeah. Paul. (laughs) Good old Paul. (laughs) Paul. (laughs) I believe in other people and give them the benefit of a doubt. I have faith in, in, and believe in you before you even deserve me. 
and Ooh. yeah, yeah, that's a wow, that's a powerful one, right? That is very powerful. But it, but when you say it, don't you feel like a freedom lifting or a yes. something lifting and like a freedom coming in? Like it kind of like I want that. I do. I want that. Yeah, I want to go in and and believe the best of people and and to see their gifts, even when like I know they're not at their best. Being uh-huh. like, no, but here's their gifts and here's what they bring to the world and how they're loved by God. I had an example of this recently in my life. I was kind of I was grousing about somebody and what they'd done and you know oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and God just kind of showed to me. He goes, Julie, stop grousing. I have something greater for you in all this, and you can't even see it because you're grousing too much mm-hmm. and complaining. I'm like. You're right. I got to see the good in this person. And once I start seeing the good, things open. God showed me things for myself, too. I think if you could read any epistle by Paul and he will walk you through how to live all of these things. <laughs> exactly. He repeats it in, in, in Hebrews and in Philippians, in, Ephesians, Ephesians, yeah, yeah all Colossians. Of <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we uh, have really had a great discussion today, Emily, on um, the renewal of the mind and becoming deeper steeped in our spiritual adoption. So, But we're going to have to close the show up here. You're listening to Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Let's close with a prayer. In the name of the, the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill our hearts with a deeper love for Jesus. Fill our hearts with that renewal of our minds that we can think as God thinks, that we can see ourselves as God sees us, that we can accept who we are as the beloved daughters of the King, of our Father who created us and designed us for this time and this purpose in this life. And and Lord, just use our flaws for your greater good. Use our nothingness for your greater good, Lord. We just surrender to you and we receive the abundance of life you'd desire to give us. And we ask this through the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Donations are always welcome at iowacatholicradio.com. And next up, we have Faith on Trial with Deacon Mike Mano and Gina Knoll. So remember, God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Today's Catholic Women. On the voice for Catholic Women now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Catholic Radio.